Okay, welcome to chapter seven. Chapter seven is learning an awful lot more about the SQL language. Up to now, the only command we've ever done is the select command. And there's a heck of a lot more to SQL than just select. So in chapter two, we talked about these categories one more time. Um, I typically only talk about three of them. I talk about the, the data manipulation lane, which is, which is what we've been using so far. The select command is a DML command. And that's for dealing with rows of data. So um, retrieving a row of data, I'm, I'm inserting a row of data, I'm changing a row of data, I'm deleting a row of data. It's all about rows of data. Data definition, which we're gonna learn here in just a few minutes, is about creating a table or altering a table or making a table go away. And then the, the third one is this data control language, which is all about permissions. And we gotta wait to chapter 10 to get that. Uh, we are gonna do a little bit of this. Um, we're gonna be doing uh, views and uh, some functions and some things like that. Uh, and transaction, we'll have to wait till chapter nine to get that. So I typically talk about these things with three categories because DDL, DML, and DCL are all pretty much well standard and the and each individual vendor can do their own thing in here in transaction control. So it's not quite as standard as you might think. Okay, so <clears throat> one more time. In chapter five, we had data that was designed to be shown off to other people, right? Chapter six, we were nudging it a little bit closer because we, not, not, the, not your, your client out here, but you had to have more specific information about what kind of data type is this and how big is this field and what are the reference, what are the constraints, you know, can an age be 400, those kinds of things. And so when we get here, chapter seven, now it's time to actually pick a database vendor and actually start building the things. It's no longer talking about it. We're actually going to do something now. And we're going to do most of it from the command line. You know, in times past, like when we were doing referential integrity in the previous chapters, we, you know, we drug and drop things. Eh, we're not doing that here. We're actually going to pop out to the command prompt, so to speak, and do our own thing. Okay, so <clears throat> enough about the categories. Let's continue. So we're going to build us a, a, a database. And so I'm going to go here. And I'm going to go to databases. And I'm going to say, I want a brand new database. Actually, we could do this by the command line, but uh, there's no value in it. So I'm going to call mine chapter seven. Okay, so now I have one. Uh, just to make dang sure that we're talking to the correct one, I'm going to go in here and say new query. That way I know dang well that this thing has been populated with the correct one. And so now I'm going to create a table. So Let's say I want to create a, a, a table full of, of majors, for example. You know, what, what major that you're taking at a university. So I would say create table and then the name of the table. Now, typically I use uppercase to start with. OK, and typically I do not make these things plural. Um, it's just kind of a naming convention. It's not create table student, not create table students, plural. I don't know. It, it, I won't take points off if you put an S on the end. That's not what I'm getting at. I'm getting at how do you go about doing this stuff. So it takes a set of parentheses. And the way I always do it, to make dang sure if you start a parentheses in one spot, that I always want it to immediately do the close parentheses. That is just me because I don't ever want to forget where things are and missing. Now, I'm going to use a tab key here. You don't have to do that. It's just only for the humans. Trust me, the machine doesn't care, okay? But this is the way we typically do it. So, I don't know, let's call this one major ID. Uh, it's gonna be an integer, because uh, it's just a plain old counting number. And it's gonna be not null, I would think. And I'm gonna put a comma here. Okay, so the comma means that's next part. You, I call them lines, like, you know, this is the first line, second line, third line. But again, that's for the human's benefit. This entire thing could be done on one line and the machine doesn't care. I care, but the machine doesn't. Okay, so uh, maybe like you're gonna need the same thing about like a major name, you know, what is you know the description or something? So I'm gonna say major name. It's gonna be a, uh, how about, it's gonna be an in varchar. And I have no idea, how about, I don't know, 30, 50, something 50. 
and then not null. Now this should look very similar to what we did in chapter six when we put that inside the Visio. I mean, you, you literally could have gone to your Visio chart, whoop, copied and gone here and went paste because it's exactly the same thing we learned before. Okay, I might have to put a comma here to keep going. Otherwise it'll get confused. So what else do you need to know? You need to know the major name, I don't know. Um, maybe an advisor, whoever is the advisor for that. I'm probably gonna do another in uh, Varchar. I don't know, maybe a 100. And could this be no? Nah, I'm not thinking so. And then a comma and keep going, all right? All right, so now I need to build some constraints. Typically you would have at least one constraint and then maybe you might have two. If you have a strong entity, you're probably just gonna have a primary key and that's it. If you have a, another type, a weak entity, then you may actually have a primary key and a foreign key. So I'm gonna build the constraints here. And so it's done with the word constraint. Constraint, oh, I got to spell it right. Constraint, and then you have to give it a name. And I usually call, I have a kind of a naming convention, something like it, like the name of the table, and then like PK for primary key, FK for foreign key, UQ for unique, things like that. It's just a naming convention, it's not required. I'm just saying, that's the way. I do it. And then you need to tell what type of constraint. Well, we're going to be doing what's called a primary key. Two words, okay? And then in parentheses here, you tell it which column is part of the primary key. Remember, if you have a compound primary key, you'd put two items in there separated by a comma, right? But in this case, I only have the one like that. <clears throat> okay, so that is a fully formed um, a, what a D what, wait a minute now is this this is a DDL command right data definition so I'm creating a table okay so let's just go through it one more time so create table the name of the table and then the three part column definition as many times as you like and then at the bit, bottom you put a series of constraints if there was some more constraints you'd put a comma there and keep going obviously I don't need a comma at the end but the comma separates the lines okay cool so I'm gonna go here and execute this, this query and don't it worked yay cool so let me go here it is i'm gonna go to tables and ta -da, i have a major table yay okay so let's talk about what kinds of, of things remember we talked about constraints a column constraint is in the column in other words null and not null i mean there's others i mean you could say a default is a constraint although technically it is but that's a that's a stretch from the English language calling a, a default a constraint. And then there's a table constraint which uses the explicit constraint keyword. Okay, so when you turn in a homework assignment and I want you to be using the explicit con constraint keyword when creating the primary keys. Okay, nod your head like you heard me say that. Okay, good, all right. <clears throat> so table constraints are typically gonna be primary key, foreign key are unique. Um, then each con each constraint has a name because we have to talk to it, okay? We have to, I, I might go in here and alter this or drop this guy. So it has to have a name, otherwise I won't tell what we're talking about. And then the column or data constraints. This would be like a null or not null. And then later on, we're gonna have a thing called a, a check constraint. And you know, a check constraint is one of those things where, you know, this could be a, uh, a domain issue or a range issue. Remember all that stuff? Good. Okay. Now, the constraint here on the line that I have highlighted, that's the one that creates the primary key. Okay, good. So let's create a student table. I'm going to keep going here just to make it a little easier to see them all at the same time. So create table student, singular, not plural. And then once again, I'm going to do this thing so I can't possibly screw up and and uh, forget to put a, a, a parentheses in there. And this is going to be a little more complicated. All right, here we go. And then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say student ID. And it's going to be an integer. And it's going to be not null. And this time I'm going to, no comma here. This time I'm going to say that it's the using the identity keyword. This is the thing that... Uh, 
Microsoft SQL uses. A digit keyword means this is an auto number. An auto number means start at one, that the little things in parentheses, start at one and increment by one. So the first one will be one, second one will be two, kind of makes sense. Okay, one more time. The identity keyword is to, is to indicate this is an auto number. It does not indicate that this is the primary key. And you should really only use these things when you really don't want to assign a number. Assigning a number to a major just kind of sort of makes sense to me because there's not going to be that many of them. But when there's going to be thousands of students, I don't want to have to generate a number every single time because the numbers are meaningless. So anyway, that's the way that's done. So, okay, we need first name, right? And that's going to be an in varchar, right? We learned all this good stuff. I about 50 for all these guys. And I'm going to say not in all, comma. And then last name in varchar, 50. No, no. I'm going to skip over a bunch of stuff. But um, no, I'm not. I'm going to keep going. So then what major are they taking? <laughs> so the major is good. I'm going to go ahead and say major ID is an integer. And um, is it okay for them to not have a major? Could you leave that blank? Yeah, okay. I'll say that. Okay. And then I'm going to go in here and do a uh, one of those multi-column issues. I'm going to do a phone one, phone two, phone two. Three. So this is the in varchar. I don't know. What's the right? It's 15, I believe. And clearly, you, this could be null. And phone two, in varchar, 15, null. And phone three, in varchar, uh, 15. That's enough. Just three of them are fine. Okay, so I've got student ID, which is an auto number, first name, last name, the major ID, which clearly is going to point back to that guy. So what is the primary constraint? I mean, primary key. Well, I need to do this constraint and I'm going to call mine student PK. Kind of makes sense. And I'm going to say primary key and it's going to be the student ID. And then comma, because I'm not done yet. I'm going to do another constraint. And I'm going to call this, when it's a foreign key, it kind of sort of makes sense to use both table names in there at the same time, like student major FK. Okay. You know, again, you don't have to do that. It's just the way I do it to maintain my sanity. Okay. So this is going to be a foreign key. Okay. And this time it's slightly different the way the foreign key works. Whenever you build a foreign key, like I need to tell what key on my side references another key on the other side. Okay, so on this side, I do it in parentheses and it's going to be major ID. And then I use this word called references. This is kind of sort of like the reference, like a, a join command. So references, I need to tell both the table and the column. And so the way you do that is kind of weird. Um, you do the table name and then in parentheses what the column is. Okay. Now I'm not quite done yet because I'm going to add some extra decorations on here. I'm going to hit the indent so I can see it. So I did not put a comma there. And then I'm going to tell it the referential integrity constraint. What do you want me to do when you do something? So. This is weird, but bear with me. So I'm going to say on delete. And I'm going to say no action, no comma here. Just keep going on update, no action. Okay. Now, now that I've kind of sort of got it, let's just look at it for a minute. First of all, not a comma here because this is all one line. All right. So one more time, the student constraint, you know, for a, creating a primary key, pretty straightforward. The the foreign key constraint, I basically tell it the key on my side and then the, the pair of table name and column. And then I have to tell it, what do you want me to do when you delete? And what do you want me to do when you update? Okay, this is a good place to stop for the 15 minute mark. I'll see you guys again in just a moment.